guys, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living narrating here as you're watching Brian prep our steel beams for our railing. We're going to be installing the loft railing in this video, and right now Brian is painting the beams a flat black enamel paint. So before he had put on the primer, that's the kind of like that rusty brown color, and now he's doing a flat black, a spraying on with a sprayer, and those will be ready to go for drilling holes because we're going to be installing cable through the holes in between the posts of the railing. So let's see how Brian gets this ready. All right, so what I'm going to do now is make a template for the um, posts for the railing. I want the, each hole to be in the exact same spot on each uh, post, so I'm going to make a quick template uh, to decide where my... Uh, cable runs are going to go. That way when I uh, drill on every post it's exactly the same uh, and I'll make it go a lot quicker too. sand so it's not all dirty. All right, so back outside now, I'm watching from the upper window. Brian's got his template right inside the beams there. It rests nicely in there with all the holes marked. And then now he's drilling through each of the holes. So he's kind of prepped them first with a little bit of a measurement and initial drilling, but um, it, he had to actually run to the store to get another drill bit because uh, he already went through the two that he had that were semi-dull. So with a nice, sharp drill bit, he was making some pretty good progress getting the rest of his holes drilled. Aside from that trip to the store, it really didn't take him hardly any time to drill the holes, and he had about 15 there to work with, so it went pretty quickly. Just to using that template really saved saved time quite a bit. I want to space them evenly, there has to be one here, so... Mm -hmm. That doesn't have to be, but I think it'd be better if it was there. So one there, and then measure out the same distance from there to there. Looks like you got something though. Yeah, it doesn't go in. So two bolts bolt it to the beam and then the cables go in the other little holes. Must be the the fasteners. You don't have to have access to the back side of the hole. Yes, that's the that would be the challenge. Oh. Because the I bought some lock washers to put on the tensioning turnbuckles. Hopefully it'll grab enough that I can turn it and put tension on it. Otherwise, I might have to tighten them up a certain amount by hand and then and keep these loose and then um, draw the whole thing in with the, with the lag bolts. Mm -hmm. And then maybe finish it up with the turnbuckles. Mm -hmm. What size bolts are those? Uh, 516. Uh, by 3 inches. Okay. 
So you got a shim under this one? Yeah. Just to make it straight. It doesn't need it because the, the ones holding uh, upright are holding it. Right. Dip in the old bolt in coconut oil. Yeah. Do a different kind of grease. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, five. All bolted down. Now, time to string cable. So, what's the cable you got there? This is a uh, 316th. Steel. Steel. Uh, I think it's stainless steel, but it's not like the super high grade. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be outside, so. Mm -hmm. Like 306 maybe. Yeah. String it through. So how did you get it on this end? So I uh, disconnected it. So what is it like a knot or is it anchored by? Uh, one of these. Uh huh. So you put that on the end. Okay. And then I used the bolt cutter to crimp it. Yeah. So stop her to stop her for the end of the cable, and I just. Okay. I was able to crimp it with that bolt cutter. So it's pretty solid. Okay. So the trick is to keep it taut enough. Yeah, so what I need to do is figure out, because I have to. What's your other in. hardware? That's your. So this is what goes on the end. This is the turnbuckle to use to tighten it up. Okay. Oh, that tightens. Okay. But I have to put a nut on the other end. That's why I bought those uh, split washers. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it'll grab when I'm trying to tighten it up. It'll grab mm -hmm. on the nut. Well, otherwise I have to figure out some other way. Mm. I should have bought the lag ones. I make one that goes right into the wood, but yeah. We got such a big crack behind there that probably wouldn't work either. I might have bend a... Hmm. So now I gotta take this off so I can put all the these things in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Pull it away. I need to put them on ahead of time. Right. Only this end that gets the turnbuckles, or they go on both? No, the stopper is on the other end. The stopper, okay. Just keeps the cable from pulling through. Yeah. Okay. But you only need one end to be able to tight. Okay. I heard it click. You did? Yeah. It doesn't click. Oh, well, I heard it tap the end of the thing. Yeah. See? It oh. comes back out. Oh. All right, so this is going to be a two-person job now. Is it all the way in? The cable's all the way in. Okay. Here. Okay. 
it. Too clean. It looks fine. It looks fine. Bolt cutter is also good for crimping if you're careful. So, measuring out the next length. And then you just do all the tightening at, all together at the end. Yes. That's where I bolt that back on the wall. Right. Yeah, okay. That's the crimp tube. Can it hang out the, uh, the back? It's supposed to? Yeah, I can. Oval. And then the... Uh... So this is flared on this end to help guide it in there and then it's like um, perfect. There's like a little bit of a ridge in there so I think it helps bite on the... Mm -hmm. How many turns do you do to... Make it taut. I don't know. However many it gives you. Yeah. I don't think it's grabbing like I was hoping it would. So what I have to do is just um, tighten them up. I have to take it off. Okay. And then tighten them up on the other side. Okay. And then do yeah. them all the same amount. And then bolt it back on. Mm -hmm. Now we need to talk about these really cool cable cutters. Yeah. I had to order them special. That's why this video was late. Yes. <laughs> the old uh, Dremel tool with the grinder <laughs> wheel or cutting wheel. It doesn't. It didn't work very well. No. Ooh, snapped. It's good. Oh, uh, there we go. Pretty flush and no fraying. Just like it's made for. Which makes it a lot easier to get into the turnbuckle. Yeah. It like just barely fits in there. There's no flare on the mm -hmm. turnbuckle. Just a couple more strands to go. So the last step after stringing all the cable is to loosen up this post from the beam and then we tighten up all the slack in the turnbuckles. I've got um, split washers on the other side. Mm -hmm. So the gap uh, <clears throat> I have to initially tighten, tighten them a little bit from the other side because the split washer won't grab until it's a bit it still has some tension on it. Mm -hmm. Sixteen, so we'll go to half inch and see. Now push it back. Is this a two person job? Yeah, Bolt it back into place after initial tightening, and the final tightening will be on the front of the turnbuckles. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully that's the that's the that's the plan, Stan.
certainly not exactly the same. Is it working? Oh, good. Let's see. No, oh, they're playing the bass. <laughs> see what the tension we're gonna get them to. Just like I planned. Just like you planned. <sighs> Looks pretty decent. Well, hey guys, hope you liked that video of how we assembled our railing. Uh, of course, you can tell there's one final component that's not complete. The very top. We don't have our, our railing. We have, the, to, we have to go searching in the woods. Yeah, we're deciding so, uh, between uh, uh, like a straight, like a fallen tree or maybe uh, or some rough cut like uh, Douglas fir or something you know with six inches by three inches yeah with some substance to it like trim down one of our timbers or something that we have left over so it has to be what 18 feet yeah it's uh yeah it's about 18 feet from mm -hmm. one end to the other so. so and then we'll need more for around the stairwell as well so mm -hmm. so that's our final piece but and there's still plenty more railing to make because we got to go around the stairwell and then we got to do the downstairs as well right. so but this was kind of a practice one we've never done this before um a little bit of learning that's why we're a few days late on the video we were got started this weekend but really didn't get a chance until we got this the cable cutting tool yes this was key i tried to circumvent using one of these because i didn't want to spend 30 bucks because we have other things that cut and <laughs> They just don't cut well enough. <laughs> they don't really cut this. If you want to like get done your project in yes. a week and not have to. Yes, get... this took like five seconds to cut through, whereas taping the cable and then trying to cut through with the Dremel tool. Yes. Using a cutting wheel. He tried, he tried the grinder first. The grinder that's what... worked really well. I had a, a little piece of cable. It was like eighth inch that we used to tie up the dog outside. and So I, I stripped the the vinyl off of it and then I tried cutting that perfect nice clean cut no fraying at all so I figured that might work for the other one but there's way more way more strands in this I think it's like a, a 719 wire so there's a lot of strands in it mm -hmm. it's very shiny especially yeah. with the light shining on it uh, very glittery almost in yeah. the, with the light Just and uh Looks good, I think, with the black and the silver, and it's very minimal. I like that we didn't go with a thicker cable because we were looking at like five sixteenths. Yeah, think. that's why I originally ordered from Walmart, and they send us chicken wire. Yeah, so that was another super. reason why our project got delayed two weeks <laughs> ago, is because when Brian originally ordered the cable, mm -hmm. they mailed us chicken wire. Yeah. Anyway. So and then uh, so definitely I like the thinner ability for it, and then also for the, the turnbuckles. We were able to get the, the nice turnbuckles with, that are very minimalistic compared to, you know, a standard turnbuckle. If you've seen it, has the big centerpiece and then the, the bolts sticking out both sides with a eye bolt on one or a leg or some kind of combination. But these are super um, streamlined. And so they really worked out well. We just used the, the bolt cutters to crimp them, as you, you saw in the video. So that seemed to work out better than... I know the crimping tool was super expensive, so mm -hmm. you know, this was a, an inexpensive way. Just don't go too far because you could cut it through. <laughs> cut through. <laughs> well, so what's so, the um, um, cost breakdown of the log supplies? So you've got the so the the posts were recycled. So that's actually an I beam from a tractor trailer bed. So the that actually makes up the floor of a tractor trailer. Then the wood is bolted to these. So. Uh, if you, if you were to go around looking, you'll see other various holes that are actually in these posts and either some of them are for the bolts to, to, to put the, um, the floor to or some of them are for um, 
hydraulic hoses to go through underneath the trailer and stuff like that. So it kind of adds a little more character to it because it's everything's not exactly perfect. There was little varying degrees of rust on either each of them too, so there, there was a lot of pitting on them, which gives it some character. Um, so those were seven uh, about. He had, a, he had a price for how, if you bought like more than 10 or more than 15. So I paid 1750 for each uh, complete one. And so each be, each beam made a uh, two posts. So. And then um, the the wire that, or the cable I had bought from Walmart was like $187. And then I ended up finding the, the 316s on eBay for about 129. And it's 500 feet. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the super high-grade stainless steel that you'd want to use outside, but it's like the notch below. Um, so that was a really good price, I thought, for mm -hmm. 500 feet. And it's, uh, like I said, I think it's a 719 stranded, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, these were about, I think there was 10 in a bundle, and they're about $17 for 10. And if you look online, some of the really fancy ones are like three, four, five dollars a piece. Mm. And so I got, you know, fifty of them for seventy some dollars. Oh wow! Eighty dollars. So, and so those worked out really good. So. So just and then your various assorted bolts and washers and yeah, things I like that. Yeah, I bought a bunch of uh, lag bolts. And for, um, for, these are two inch for the to bolt the the, uh, the posts to the floor, and then I got three inch to bolt them to the I-beams. And then so, your cable cutter, what you, you scored cable. a good deal, because you thought that was gonna but, be $100. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I paid uh, like 25 or $29. Ended mm -hmm. up, I bought the one that was a little bit better than the cheapest one. So, um, and it had, you know, Amazon had uh, decent reviews on it. I think the spring is plastic, one buddy, some person commented on that, but it seemed to work just fine. So it cuts smooth. I had to make one, extra cut because it frayed a little bit and the oh that was one of the little nut the little stoppers so on the on the other end we didn't have a turnbuckle we just had a, a aluminum stopper and so so you can see here so the it's this it actually has a nice little bevel on the end of it on one end of it so that you could feed it in there pretty well that and so and then the other side is uh, really tight fit I mean that's like thousands of a tolerance there and then I just used the bolt cutter on it just like that to squash it down and so again that saved buying the, the crimping tool so that worked like a charm and these were I don't know, five bucks for 50 of them or ten bucks for 50 so mm -hmm. they worked out super well so cool so and then hopefully we'll get, you know, a nice piece of wood out in the woods for the actual railing on the top and just have to do some, uh, you know, trimming on it and stuff mm -hmm. to make it fit. So, like so yeah, nice, good, and it came, you know, for experimenting for our first time, I feel like it came out really nice mm -hmm. and now the rest of it should go really smoothly now that we have our system down mm -hmm. of measuring, the cutting, and yep, crimping. Yeah, that worked out good. <laughs> We did, uh, you know, do a lot extra work on these just to paint them up real good. We welded a tab at the top. So that when we put the railing on, we can actually bolt up through it into mm -hmm. it, so it's nice and secure. So, so yeah, have you guys uh, ever tried doing a cable railing before, or using steel beams in your construction? If so, let us know and how you like. Let us know how you like the look. I think it looks pretty good because it's a little bit more modern and industrial compared to the really rustic look of the rest of the house. So I think it's a nice contrast and adds a nice detail to that. Mm -hmm. But um, stay tuned, guys. We've got more videos coming. I know we it took a little while on this one, but we've had some other stuff to deal with, namely uh, car issues. And uh, the upcoming video. Upcoming video. I think we'll be car shopping soon <laughs> this weekend. Got uh, big, my first craft show of the year this weekend. So I'm going to be, I've been busy getting ready for that. And uh, well, we're getting ready for another snowstorm yeah, this more week. Hell. You didn't believe it. It's, it's May Why? 7th. Why? No. Like, anyway. Forecasted yeah. potential 16, 16 inches. 16 inches are saying. Ah! But. For May 7th. Like, I don't know. What was it last week? We only got three out two of Two or three. Yeah. yeah so. so maybe it'll melt fast. Maybe it'll really warm up after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Take care. We will see you at the next video.